God loves you. No matter who leaves you, no matter who abandons you, you can tell yourself with confidence that I know that God loves me. That God loves me. He loves you. He loves you. In the name of Jesus. And don't allow any force, any person to take away the consciousness of his love for you from you. It is the bedrock of your victory. It is the bedrock of your success. Praise the Lord. I say praise the Lord. Amen. This morning is the grand finale of our 14 days. 14 days of prayer and fasting. Releasing God's glory and power that is in us. Which is in line with our focus for this year. Our prophetic focus for this year. Which is Christ in you. The hope of glory. Amen. Because Christ is the glory of God. When Christ came into you, the glory of God came upon you. Arise, shine, for your light is come. And the glory of God is risen upon you. And because the glory of God is risen upon you, the darkness shall cover the earth and gross darkness the people. But the glory of God that is risen upon you shall distinguish you. You won't be part of the darkness. We were part of the troubles and the woes of COVID-19 and its various variants. Praise the Lord. You are settled in Christ. You have peace in Him. You have honor in Him. You are highly favored in Him. You are blessed beyond measure. In the name of Jesus. Praise the Lord. So, our, this is our year of manifesting who? Christ. And Christ is the glory of God. So it is our year of what? Manifesting God's glory. Tell somebody manifesting God's glory. And you know you can't manifest God's glory in shame. In reproach. In rags. In poverty. Hello. You manifest God's glory in beauty. In honor. In, in riches and wealth. Praise the Lord. Amen. So we can also say that it's our year of supernatural success, divine success, prosperity, everything that glory represents, everything that Christ came to die for us to have back and enjoy. It is the time to manifest it. Praise the Lord. I say praise the Lord. So I'd like you to look forward to it. I'd like you to position ourselves. And that is why the 14 days, the first 7 days of the 8 days, we dealt with what the glory of God is all about. The contents of His glory. The riches of His glory. And the good news is that the grace of God, when you receive the grace of God, Christ, amen, you received the contents of His glory, the riches of His glory in you. Amen. Praise the Lord. And we mentioned some of those riches. Amen. The power of God. The mind of Christ. The faith of God. All these riches that are in you. Amen. And you know when Paul prayed for the church in Philippi. Philippians 4.19. Philippians 4.19. Right. After they have demonstrated so much support for his ministry, he prayed for them and said, He said, My God shall supply what? All your needs. Not according to the economy. Not according to something that is outside of you. According to what is riches in glory by Christ Jesus, who is in you. Hello. So these riches are already in you. These are the things that make you rich. Hello. See, God has done everything for you to be a grand success, an outstanding success. And these things that you will, hello, will make that, bring that success, that, that, that glory out of you, 
They already in you. They already in you. Even faith inside you to have to be justified to be do to do this to do that to move mountains is already inside you. God gave you as a gift. You are enjoying it as a gift. So where do you have? Why do you have to boast? But quickly he told us something. It is excluded. You can't boast here. But what law? By what law? Not the law of works. You don't. You didn't get it by your works, by your performances. So by what law? The law of what? Nay, but by the law of faith. Okay, as you come on, praise God. Hallelujah. At least you have. My own will be out soon. We're ready very soon. Praise the Lord. Amen. By the law of faith. Say it would be the law of faith. So, listen. Faith, if faith must produce, it must obey laws. Because, you see, God has regulated everything in life. By laws. They operate on laws. Hello? I, like I told you before, when the Bible says you are no longer, you are now under grace, you are no longer under law, they are not talking about the laws of God, who, which are in form of spiritual or supernatural laws and natural laws. Hello? It's not part of it, though. It, you are not above that one. That one, that was the superior law that. God put in place through the death, burial, and resurrection of Christ to pay for the price of your sin so that you can be free. That's why the Bible says, Hello, the law of the spirit of life in Christ Jesus set you free from what? The law of what? Sin and death. So the superior one set you free so that you can keep this, the, 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 set you free from the inferior one so that you can, you'll be able to keep what? The superior law, spiritual laws and natural laws. You are not free from them. Without those laws, without obeying them, without keeping them, without knowing them and applying them to your life, all the great deposits in you, the, the riches of God's glory, will, you will never be able to manifest it. That's why we began to deal with the laws. Is somebody getting it? Praise the Lord. Amen. So, so you need to understand that, look, you, you exist in two realms as a believer or as a human being. Every human being, you exist because you were first created to be as a spirit. Hello? You have a soul and live in the body. Remember that? Praise the Lord. You are, you are a spirit to operate in the realm of the spirit. When you sin, hello, There's the heart of your spirit backed up. Hello, the heart of your spirit backed up. Just like when somebody gets mad, the heart of his soul, which is his brain, his mind, backed up. Praise the Lord. Amen. That's why Satan still, Satan operates on the earth. Through man, he doesn't have any legal right to have anything done on the earth without man, because man is one that has authority. So he uses the authority that man has to do a havoc on the earth against men. Praise the Lord. Amen. For those who have submitted to him, or those who are even Christians that are careless and don't even know themselves. So he uses their ignorance to take advantage of them and take advantage of others. Do you get what I'm saying? Praise the Lord. Amen. So you need to get this. And then you live in a physical world. That's why you have a physical body. So they want to relate with this physical body. But there are laws. Your physical relationships, your physical activities are regulated by what? That you must know. That you must understand. And that you must apply. If you want to make a way. Everything. Yes. As human beings you need money. Nobody is taking money away. So money is, a, is, a, is for this world. You came to this world naked. You are going to, so every material thing. Money everything is what? Is, 
So it is regulated by physical laws, natural laws given by God. So you want to have it, you want to manage it, you want to keep it, then what? You must learn these laws and operate by them. I am telling you something that it took me how many years? Hello? Several decades to learn. That's what I'm sharing with you free of charge here this morning. Please. Don't play with laws if you want to make any mark in life. Amen? Hallelujah. So success. Is an integration of principles. Success in anything. And failure is as a result of lack of failure or lack of success in life is as a result of lack of obedience, lack of submission to the truths, the laws, the ways of God, the thoughts and the ways of God. Praise the Lord. I say praise the Lord. Amen. You see unbelievers, they succeed. Uh, what's his name? Uh, who is the wealthiest man in Nigeria? I believe in Africa. What's his name? Dangote. It, does, he, does he know Bible? Hey, beloved, I, I present before you what? Blessing and curse. Life and what? Death. Blessing and... He said choose life. So... Your choice for life should make you to choose to obey the laws of God. That will make that life a reality. Amen? God wants everybody to succeed. That is why he made all things to function by laws. Those who find out those laws. Because those laws are, they are secrets. When you find them, you learn them, you, you apply them they will make the success that God has ordained for you a reality. I will keep you there in the name of Jesus. I said in the name of Jesus. Amen? Hallelujah. And you know when you succeed, your success, like I said some time ago, makes, gives God, enhances God's reputation. God wants you to succeed because it's good for his reputation. Amen? It's good for his reputation. God will be glorified. He said, Ten men shall hold the skirts of him that is a Jew. I will say, Come. Ah, come and take us to your God. I've seen God in your life. We used to sell granite together. Now your story has changed. Ah, we see God who follow us to your God. That is what will happen concerning every one of us here. That will obey laws. That will keep and stick to God's, God's ways. Amen? And it doesn't matter you be a, Hello? It doesn't matter your level. It doesn't matter your education. It doesn't matter. Just know. If you can, just know the ways of God. So people know the ways of business. Terrible people. Our brothers in our area. Our brothers in uh, our nature. Hello? They know it. They just apply it. They didn't pass, some of them didn't even go to school sat. But they employ doctor. There is one man in Lagos. One time I wanted to get into you know, God, thank God for me. I wanted to get into satellite uh, this thing to introduce the one man. His office, I talked with him, but I was to go and meet him. As I got home, as I sat and I started praying and studying. I just, I just knew that I had already taken a wrong step. And he didn't call the man again. But that guy, the way he was talking, he said, English, no balance. But the person, he said, when you come, you will see my manager. Yeah? As he is. So I told my friend, who has such uh, these, uh, these things that, uh, I think that thing now that we were to, I was to do. Uh, eh? Pan, eh, uh, eh. -huh. Uh, solar panels, good. 
the person, the, 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 the manager of the company, who is who he pays, the one that didn't go to school is paying him. Amen. The manager is, is, a, is doctor or something. Doctor. But the ownership belongs to that man. He just knows of business secrets that he has put to work and is working for him. Hello? The secrets of life. Amen? He said the secret things belong unto God. Amen? They belong to God. They are secrets. But the things that are revealed belong to us and our children. Amen? Grace, of course. Grace is constant. The variable is laws. Two things. The grace of God. It has endowed you. It will keep you. It's still there. That is why you don't, while you are doing this, I, I tell people, when it's time to pray, like we have prayed these 14 days, pray as if without your prayer. Because the letter come boldly unto his throne of grace that he may obtain mercy and find what? Grace to help you. You need the help of God. No matter the laws you know and you apply. You need what? The help of God. So you keep praying. We are praying. Praise the Lord. But after we have finished praying now, boy, do what? Eh? We are going to be teaching on these secrets of success in various areas, month by month. Hello? You learn them. You also learn from, amen? Do other research for yourself and walk in them and see yourself go up. See yourself leave people behind. Hallelujah. I said, hallelujah. Amen. Amen. So, success is the fulfillment of an original purpose. An ori uh, that's another point I want to emphasize on. Success is the fulfillment of an original purpose. So, you must find out your purpose. The reason why you must find your purpose is because if you don't know your purpose, you will think that while you are making great progress in the eyes of God, you will think that you are a failure. Because that's why God said, comparing themselves to themselves, they are not what? Wise. Success is the fulfillment of your purpose, God given purpose. Not uh, that you are doing better than another person. You are dressing better than another person. You are eating better than another person. That is, does not make you success. It is God's purpose for your life. Are you fulfilling it? Do you know it? Are you fulfilling it? That is what determines success. Eh? Are you getting what I'm saying? That is why, see, for instance, one of my mentors, I think Dr. Miles Morrow, he said something. He said, they wrote exams. They, in, they wrote the test in his class. He was in primary school. It was secondary school, I don't know. But he was in school. And they wrote an exam, a test, and he scored 48 in the entire class. And that was the highest in the class. So when they gave him his, his, his school, his sheet, after school, he ran to the house, was very excited to show his mother. He didn't even tell the mother what he scored. He told the mother he took first in the test. The mother said, oh, that's good, my boy. Bring this. Let me see. Brought this. She saw 48%. He said he scored 48 out of 100%. The purpose, the original purpose was scored 100%. That he was the first among, he took first as compared to other classmates does not make him a success. I say you are, he said you are a failure. He said you are a, you failed. Instead of celebrating him, she started abusing him. How can you score 48% out of 100? And you are happy that you took... All your classmates are fools. Then your teacher should be sacked. That's what she said. Then he went... He said he was, initially was angry. Why did my mother even appreciate me? I took first position. Then, but when he grew up, he now understood it. Now that is it. Comparing themselves. So it is not what you achieve as compared to others or another person, your friend, your neighbor. That's bullshit. 
what you achieve according to God's purpose for your life. That's success. So locate it. Locate why you were born and do it. That's why I feel comfortable anyway. Hello? Don't feel down about myself. What determines me is not the, is not the size of this congregation. But then we believe God for it to, to explode and have extensions all over the world. But I know that right now there are things I'm doing that are reaching the entire world. So if you want to calculate that one. So I don't compare anybody. My own purpose will be different from another person's purpose. It's all, the one person's own may be physical one like this. Another person's own could be through his product. Hello? Hello? Bill Gates doesn't have factories, industries, uh, trailers, tippers like Dangote. Is that true? But will you say it's not a success? It's richer than Dangote. How do you know? How many of you have seen his factories? His, his products is in every computer, every laptop, every phone that you can't see. Hello? But is greater than Dangote, who has three last. Are you thinking well now? Why? He used what he has. That Bill Gates used what he has and built Microsoft. Following principles. Dangote also used what he has and built Dangote Group with principles. Do your own. So that it will come out for everyone to see. If you start by finding out what we are created for. I will do that. Today just to introduce it. Praise the Lord. Amen. Somebody is blessed here. So what is laws? I said law or laws are inherent principles that regulate nature of life and relationship. Relationships. In God's creation. Those are laws. Amen. Inherent. They are built in. Built in principles of life. Built in principles. Amen. Praise the Lord. Hello. You go to buy. Go to the market and bought. And you buy a, uh, an equipment. It will be in a carton. Is that true? It will be sealed in the carton. You see the manufacturer's name, made, in, made by these people, uh, made in this country. You buy it, you pay for it, and then you take it home. And then you open the carton. When you open the carton, oftentimes, what do you see first? Manual. Instructional manual. And they will tell you, do not use this product except you go through what? The manual. So Because it is the manuals that will tell you how to use it. Praise the Lord. The word of God is the manual of life. It contains, the Bible contains the manuals. That is why he told Joshua, Joshua, this book of the law, these my laws, my manuals, for good success, not bad success. Hello? And uh, what? Prosperity. They are inside here. They are inside here. Meditate, I know, uh, talk them, right? Speak them for, meditate on them, then observe to what? Apply or do them. And then you will make your way prosperous. You will make you are the one. Hello? God has already prospered you. But you are now the one. The ball is now in your court to make your way prosperous and have what? Good, no bad success. If you sell drugs, if you are a drug dealer and you have uh, plenty of money, are you that one success? One day your shame will come. One day, one day, one day, one government will come and decide to bulldoze you and catch you and arrest you and make you a public mess. Because that is not good success. The blessing of the Lord, it maketh rich and added sorrow. And God's blessings are tied to his ways, his laws. Keeping his laws, friends. Not by living for miracles.
Amen. When you keep his laws, you produce the miracles yourself. God said to Adam, Adam, <laughs> do you want my relationship with you to continue to be glorious like this? Then this, you must not eat. Hello? You, must, you can eat every other thing, but don't eat this one. If not, I'll push you out of this garden. He said, if not, you will surely die. The day you eat it, you will surely what? You will surely die. You will surely die. So it was not God that killed. Uh, uh, it is he's breaking the law. Because inherent or built in, in every law, is the punishment. So when the Bible says they are not under, <laughs> under law, under grace, does not mean that uh, you should go and break up. The punishment they inside. If God says, don't commit adultery, don't take confrontation, nobody will happen. You will do it, you clean your face, you walk away. One day, one day, monkey will go market, and they will come back. Hello? You won't see shame. Oh. Amen? I suppose who are in the social media, you see all kinds of things. You see, we are one man and one woman. One day, they were doing some funny things. Another person's wife, he, he has a way of sneaking in to see her. One day, the thing called hook. You know what I mean? They dragged two of them outside, covered them with cloth, but they didn't cover their faces. So everybody was seeing their faces. Hello? Because built in, in every law, are they what? Are they punishments, whether good or bad? You obey them, it will lift you. You disobey them, it will punish you. The law will, not God, though. God doesn't punish anybody. God doesn't punish anybody. You are the one that will punish yourself. If you obey them. Do them and you will make your way prosperous. And you have the what? Good success. Praise the Lord. Amen. Hey. I will stop at uh, 11. Is that okay? Eh? I should stop now. I will stop at 11. Let me give me till 11. I'll stop there. Amen. So, very important. Very, very important. Okay, let me take this last lap. Wherever I get, I stop. We'll continue next Sunday or during the week. Whatever. Amen. Praise the Lord. So, there are differences between spiritual laws and natural laws. Spiritual laws and natural laws. Both of them were made by God, the creator of the universe. Amen? Spiritual laws regulate our relationship with God. Sin is a breaking of the spiritual law. Adam broke it and he got disconnected from God. Is that true? Praise the Lord. Spiritual law. And the law says, because it says, the soul that sinned shall And sin is the disobedience of the law or transgression. Amen? So that sinner shall die. And what happened to that? And then the law brought, there is a remedy. And what is the remedy? Death. If you want to redeem the person from breaking the law, you die. So, so death must take place. And the soul that the dead must not be corrupt, must be pure for it to be acceptable where? In heaven. In the heavenly holy of holies. Is somebody getting me? And no man was who made that. That's why God has to come by himself and use his blood to offer sacrifice. Amen? For To free us. To meet the requirement of breaking the law by Adam. Hello? Amen? So, number one, natural laws. Natural laws are inherent or built into creation. Hello? Natural laws. For instance, if eating food is a natural law. And if you don't refuse to, if you refuse to eat, what happens to you? Natural built-in consequences will apply to you. Is that true? Amen? Amen. Natural. It's built-in. Hello? 
Nobody needs to tell you. You carry cigarette. Nobody smokes here in Jesus' name. But you carry cigarette. Oh. Like some of you. Some of us, when we are small, those bad days, <laughs> we used to use the new competition. Yeah. Okay, so we, we don't bat before. Thank God for Jesus. Amen. We used to use the new competition. We will see how the thing they come out. Now, rig. Amen. Amen. Praise the Lord. Praise the Lord. God is not punishing you. Is God punishing you? It is the law, the built in consequences for breaking the law that is punishing you. Not God. Hello? As a boy or girl, you're just messing around. Okay. One day, come mess around, come hit gonorrhea, syphilis, HIV. Hello? Eh? God forbid, oh. There is nobody like that here in Jesus' name. By faith. <laughs> say by faith. I say so by faith, amen? Or in reality. In, in reality, in Jesus' name. Amen. They establish natural order. Laws. Establish natural order. Hello? The way we were born naturally, my, my parents gave birth to us. I have those who see near me. I have the ones I see near. Natural what? I don't. Hello? We cannot, I cannot go and say to my elder sister, I see near you. You are stupid. No. Natural birth has kept an order. It is the same thing. You eat. You eat. If you eat nonsense, this that's not good for your stomach. It will, it will, it will, be, it will, be, it will cause this, the disorder. You begin to... You, you go to a thing, you have, you have in your stomach. They are playing football match in your stomach. And then you quickly... Ah, as if he wants to go, you quickly run and look for somewhere. And then you see that... How many people know what I'm talking about? Sorry, I'm very vulgar this morning, but permit me to say this. You have broken the law. You have, you have, you have, you have done disorderly. Amen? They regulate natural relationships. Natural relationships. Husband, what? Love your wife. Wife, love your wife. Amen? Respect your senior. My father almost killed me because of... Uh, Disobeying that law. And I had six stars. Six stars before me, five of them, two of uh, one of them behind me. So I initially I'll fight them, I beat them. Amen. One day I beat my youngest, my elder sister. Fought I I kept Amen. My, wife, my father came and he heard. He didn't talk to me. He didn't see he has no head. I went to the night. I climbed bed and slept. Ha! In my sleep, I started yelling, Ibu, Ibu, Ifra, Ifra, Ifra. Hello? I got out of sleep. I was, he has locked the door. He, he locked the door. So I know where to go out. No way to go through the window. He flung and flung and flung me. From that day, I stopped fighting my sister. So rather, I will protect them. Hello? Amen. Natural order. A broken natural order. She's your senior sister. Hello? And she's a woman. Don't be that. Praise the Lord. They, change, they cannot be changed. Natural laws. We cannot change them. If we try to change them, amen? Uh, some people say, they want to become women. Men, no. They want to become women. They go and construct their system to become women. They are wasting themselves. They are wasting their time. Okay, if you say, okay, naturally, it's man and woman. You say now, it's man and man. Oh, I come and have children now. No matter how you do it, you won't have children. He said, now, woman and woman. Okay, no problem. Come and have two of you. Have, who is, he said, this one is your wife. Okay, let her have children for you. Because yeah, it's, it's not natural, it's not it's regulated by what? The natural law of reproduction. 
Praise the Lord. Amen. Ah, I have five minutes. Then there, okay, then okay. I said, I've told I've talked about built in consequences. Praise the Lord. Now, spiritual laws also established by God. It establishes it established the law of conscience. It's a spiritual law that established the law of conscience in you. Listen. Whether you are born again or not born again, when you are doing wrong, you know that you are doing wrong. Is that true? You are con something tells you inside. Because your conscience is built into your spirit. It's built into your spirit. It's in your spirit. So whether you are born again or not born again, it keeps telling you, this is wrong. Is somebody hearing me? Praise the Lord. Amen. Spiritual laws are inherent in human spirit. They are inherent. Spiritual laws regulate spiritual relationships, like your relationship with God. Amen. Your relationship with other fellow believers and people outside. They regulate it. Amen. Praise the Lord. Amen and amen. Amen. You know why we have demons? Demons. It's because of disobedience to order, to law. And the word demon means tormented one or torment. They, how did they become demons? They were, they were created for a purpose in heaven. Amen? Just like Lucifer is the head of the demons. Praise the Lord. Now, God had three, three powerful ministers, first class ministers in heaven to run his government. Number one, Lucifer. He was in charge of culture and tradition in heaven. Music. All of those are under culture, right? Michael was in charge of warfare. Anytime there is need for warfare, spiritual warfare, Michael appears. If you read the Bible, you see that. And then Gabriel was a minister for who? For what? Communication or information. Anytime God wants to send messages to the earth or anybody, he sends who? Gabriel. Amen. But said, Lucifer said, oh, I want to, I, I'm not satisfied anymore. I want to take Ogar's seat. He walked out of order. He, he take Ogar's seat. He organized some people around him who are now demons. Amen. To do what? To overthrow God. Ezekiel is there, 14 or thereabout. I don't in Revelation. To overthrow God. And God now said, eh, you want to do that? He now cast him down. And from being Lucifer, finest creature, he became what? The devil. And all those people that joined him in the rebellion and walked out of order, tried to create disorder in heaven, they became what? Demons. Tormented, tormented ones. They are tormented. That's why when a demon enters somebody, they torment the person. Praise the Lord. Tormented ones. So that's why you need to find out your purpose. When you are out of purpose, you, your life will not only be tormented, you will torment other people's lives. Amen? So demon is not only... There are some human beings that uh, are out of their God's ordained purpose. They are being tormented. And when you, contact, you come in contact with them, they will torment you. Praise the Lord. You are blessed forever. We can't finish now. We'll just stop wherever we can stop. And my time is up now. Hallelujah. I said hallelujah. I said hallelujah. Don't miss any service this year. And I tell you, your life will never remain the same. I say your life will never remain the same. God said, I will give you the keys of the kingdom. The keys of the kingdom. What are keys? 
keys are laws. When God said, I will give unto you the keys of the kingdom so that you can bind. He's talking about knowledge. The knowledge of his principles. Because it will give you control in life. And what is a key? A key is what you use to control entrance into a place. Is that true? Amen. A man that has the key can decide to lock everybody out. Amen. Now if you came this morning to worship and somebody who has the key didn't come. I said we break it. Or we have to wait for the person who has the key to come. Control. He has control access. That's why Jesus said to the Pharisees, the teachers of the law, in Luke chapter 11 verse 52. Please put it on the on the board. On the screen. Luke 11 52. He said about the scribes, the lawyers. He said they have they have the keys to enter, and yet they, re, they stop others from entering. Something like that. Is it there? Luke 11 52, right? He said, Woe unto you, lawyers, for you have taken away the key of knowledge, principles, laws of. You enter not, you enter not in yourself, and then that we are entering, you hinder. Control it gives you control. When you have the key, you can stop whatever you want to stop. Hello? You can stop. That's why, look, I don't know. People who are against Malachi, they took every other thing. Malachi said in Malachi chapter 3 about giving, offering, and tithe. Okay, they accepted offering, and then they said, no. Where is that one? That's stupidity. That's a lie. That is selective uh, whatever. It's not right. That's wrong. Amen. They call it the tithe. They say, God said, bring your tithes and your offerings. But they now say tithe is no longer relevant. But offering is relevant. They collect offering ten times to meet up, cover up for their tithe. Rubbish. I fell into it. I'm out. Amen. <laughs> I fell into it. I came out. Praise the Lord. Amen. He said, when you, when you disobey, devour us, torment us, we torment you, torment your finance. Be warned, though, I'm not, you know, for you to know that I stopped it in this church. So it means that it is not because of need, hello, that I put it, but I discovered that it's good for us. That's why I encourage us to what? To do it. Praise the Lord. God bless you. No one will see torment this year. Rise up to your feet, lift up your hands to heaven and give him thanks and give him praise. Give you praise.